Welcome back to the God Success Teach and Pray. Today's verses come out of Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 13. And the topic is a cry of sheer desperation. <laughs> This is yours truly, His Excellency the Car, and I am a co-host of our God Success Teach and Pray, and I'm I'm with our leader of the day, our Bishop Dr. Reginald Benjamin Chaplin. Please take us away. Thank you, His Excellency the Car, and it is a blessing to be back with you this morning on another another broadcast. Join me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for another opportunity that you've given us. Thank you for this brand new day, life, health, strength, and the ability to walk out and to do the will of God, whatever your will is for us on this day. We pray for your people, that they will receive your word, that you will write your word on their hearts, stepping in their minds and help them to go out and be doers of that word and not hearers only. Let your word change us, challenge us, and let your word convict us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, His Excellency Descartes has already given you our scripture in your leisure time. If you will read Mark chapter five, verses one through 13. And again, the topic for today is a cry of sheer desperation. Now, the passage that I ask you to read in your leisure time is a passage that deals with Jesus confronting the man that was demon possessed. So if you can remember that story, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Again, topic, a cry of sheer desperation. By way of introduction, I'd like to share a testimony uh, of a TV show that I saw titled, I Survived. And on this particular segment that I saw that night, we saw two intruders into a home one night and you can actually hear on the 911 call the voice of the wife that she was in distress that she and her husband desperately needed help and from listening to that you knew that if someone did not get there and get there quickly she and her husband would be killed by their attackers they were blooded from head to toe when the cops showed up. They were wounded, they were hurt, but amazingly, they both survived and were able to tell about what happened to them that night. So we're gonna talk to you about that sheer cry of desperation. In chapter four, if you go back and read that, Jesus had just finished teaching a lot of parables to a crowd of people who stood on the seashore. And then that evening, after the multitude had been dismissed, he told his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Now, my question had always been, why? Why would he, after having taught so long, taught so many people, and he was tired, exhausted from a long day why would he tell his disciples, let's go over to the other side? Well, I want to answer that for you because I have three main points I want to give you in this message. And that first point would be Jesus's spiritual sense. Jesus's spiritual sense. Because Jesus has spent a lot of quality time alone praying, meditating, and talking to his father, he was in tune with God, he was in tune with his own spirit, and he was even in tune with nature. Therefore, after the crowd has dispersed and he had, he had finished explaining those parables to his disciples, he heard something that wasn't captured by the natural ear. He heard someone crying out in agony, someone crying out in sheer desperation. And Jesus had resolved within himself to go and rescue that person who was crying out. Did y'all catch that? 
the disciples did not hear that cry. The disciples had no idea why Jesus wanted to go to the other side. The only thing they knew is that they were taking Jesus across the lake. But Jesus had something specific in mind. Remember, Jesus is spiritual sense. That's point one. Let's go on to point number two. The demoniac's sensitive situation. In other words, that demon-possessed man had a very sensitive situation that Jesus knew about nobody else. And I'm talking about his homies now, those 12 disciples. They didn't know about it. Our text states that this man was crazy insane, lunatic, because he was demon-possessed. He was just wild and out of his mind, as well as out of control. People were very afraid of him, and rightfully so. Let's delve into that just a little bit. First of all, that man who was demon-possessed was banned from society. The men of the town, and they were in the region of Gadara. So the Gadarean men would bound him with chains and fetters and then run him out of town. And he went from mainstream society to a solitary place, out wandering in the hills and the mountains, talking to himself. So from society to a solitary place and from a solitary place into seclusion. What do you mean by that? Because the word of God even tell us he was in the graveyard. He, he was among the tomb. And while he was among the tomb, cutting himself, trying to get some relief, he was also talking to people who couldn't talk back because those people were dead. <laughs> and can you imagine, not only were, was he talking to people who couldn't talk back, but he had all of these voices in his head, all talking to him at the same time. Okay, well, since point number one is Jesus' spiritual sense, point number two, the demoniac sensitive situation, let me go ahead and give you point number three, which is my last point for the day. Point number three, Jesus' saving suffrage. Jesus' saving suffrage. Because, notice this now, when the man with all of those demons, confronted Jesus, laid prostrate on the ground before the Lord and Savior. Here's what Jesus began to do. Jesus began to talk to the demon that had possessed him. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? And the demon replied, legion, because we are many. Now, even though the Bible does not give us, and the demon that spoke did not give us, the number, the actual number, amount of demons that were in this man, I have a good idea. And the reason I do, because I went back and did my research, and in the Roman army, a legion is about 6,000 soldiers. I don't think y'all even caught that. A legion in the Roman army is about 6,000 soldiers. So that means this demoniac man, this demon, possessed man had about 6,000 demons in him, possessing him, all of them talking to him all at the same time. Man, I can't even concentrate if six people talking to me. So how am I going to concentrate when there's 6,000 voices all at one time? And, and something else I want you to catch. Those demons were much more afraid of their God, who was Satan, than they were of Jesus. How do I know that? Because here's what they asked Jesus. In, in conversing with Jesus, they said, now, don't send us away out of this region. Now, what point are you trying to make, Benjamin? I'm trying to let you know that demons are assigned to specific areas by the devil. There are demons assigned to certain countries. There are demons assigned to certain states. There are demons assigned to certain cities. There are demons assigned to certain regions, certain areas, certain families, certain churches. And these demons who had been assigned 
to the region of Gadara by Satan were more afraid of leaving that area and having to, to face Satan for being AWOL, for leaving their post, than they were afraid of facing Jesus. And I said, I know that because they begged Jesus, don't send us away from this place. And they made a suggestion. They gave him a proposal. Look, there, there's a herd of swine over there. Why don't you give us permission to go into the swine? And Jesus permitted them. He said, go. They went in and possessed 2,000 pigs. And if you do the math, that's about three demons to each pig. And three demons in each one of the pigs drove each pig crazy until the Bible said they ran off the cliff down into the lake and drowned themselves. Now you can see why this man was out in the tombs, in the graveyard, cutting himself with whatever he can find, trying to kill himself and trying to get some relief, but the demon would even let him die. So when he saw Jesus come to him, that was his last bit of hope. Jesus had heard that cry of sheer desperation and came to see about the man. And Jesus delivered the man from the prowess of the devil's grip, loosed the man and let him go free and told the man, I want you to be a witness here locally and tell people what good things the Lord has done for you. And he evangelized more than 10 cities after having been delivered. My word for you today is, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how bad the situations, the circumstances, or the conditions of life, but I'm here today to tell you, cry to the Lord, because he will hear your cry of sheer desperation, and he will come. He will show up at the right place at the right time to handle the situation. God bless you. I love you. And back to my co-host, co His Excellency, the car take a Yes, absolutely. Thank you for that amazing testimony. And, and uh, you tell the story so well. Uh, you tell the story so well. Uh, it's like uh, when we hear you tell your story, it's like, uh, like at elementary school, everybody gathers around and crisscross applesauce and, and, and just, just pays attention to the teacher. So yes, we, we definitely appreciate that great, great message and great testimony. And I, I like how, how at the end you talked about how, how the grace of God can, can carry you from any, any of your, uh, your share cry of the desperation. So I, I thank you for that message. If you all want to go back to that, that comes out of our today's verses, which is Mark chapter five, verses one through 13. And the topic is a cry of share desperation. I've been yours truly as Excellency the car. And I want to remind you to like, subscribe, comment, and share, and be sure to stay tuned as we have some more messages that follow. Thank you. Global Ovid Day Seminary and University God's You is a 501c3 interfaith e-learning Global Florida Department of Education Commission of Independent Studies approved degree issuing religious institution of higher learning under Florida Statute 1005.061F in Miramar, Florida, a suburb of Fort Lauderdale suburbs. Our curricula include programs like our theology diploma, bachelor's, master's, and PhD programs, which are designed for students called to the ministries of teaching and preaching. Program enrollees include pastors, evangelists, missionaries, and laypersons. Our additional courses entrepreneurial studies, premier self-development courses on wealth building. We also offer a mini course for youth, the Junior Ambassador Youth Public Speaking, to gain prof professional and personal skills. Chaplaincy Diploma, Love and Spiritual Interfaith and Christian Programs. Chaplains are trained, certified leaders attached to either a religious and or non-religious institution or organization. 
cybersecurity IT courses. Our licensed instructor has a 95% pass rate compared to the 30% national average for CompTIA accredited courses, such as Security Plus and Network Plus. 40% of our alum who've gone through our prestigious God's You Honors programs have also previously matriculated through their earned doctorate programs. Our alum include physicians, ambassadors, statesmen and stateswomen, icons and billionaires, religious leaders, titans in business, global philanthropists such as Ambassador of Ghana to the United States, His Excellency Dr. Bafour A.J. Bewa, Ambassador of Nigeria to the United States, His Excellency Dr. Sylvanas Musafor, Billionaire Builder and Dean, His Excellency Dr. Michael V. Roberts, Former Maritime Minister, Government of Nigeria, Honorable Dr. Leke Olawale, President of Fraser Net and Fraser Nation and Power Networking Conference, Dean, His Excellency Dr. George Fraser, Our World Class and Esteemed Professor include Attorney Her Excellency Reverend Dr. Diane Moore Eubanks, PhD, Chancellor, Physician Dr. Eric Pizetsky, Clinical Health and Nutrition and God's You Medical Expert, Physician Her Excellency Rhoda Makinde, PhD, Chief Medical Doctor, God's You Medical Missions, Dean Michael V. Roberts, JD, PhD, Dean of Entrepreneurship Studies, Dean George Fraser, PhD, Personal Development Studies, Dean Kyra Eubanks, Dean of Junior Ambassador, Professor Willis Eubanks, PhD, Dean of Cybersecurity Program, Professor Reverend Dr. Joseph Hickman, Associate Professor, Theology Program, Professor Imam Dr. Talib Sharif, Professor Interfaith Program and Chaplaincy, Professor Reverend Dr. William Blake, Theology Program Curriculum Development, Professor His Excellency Dakar, Ethical and Successful Marketing Technique, Entrepreneurial Studies. Blessings! I also want to remind you to please like, Comment, subscribe, and share to everyone. Need a custom prayer? Send a prayer request to sisterofstrength.us. This is yours truly, your MC and engineer, His Excellency Dakar, and our Director of Operations at God You. And I'm the CEO of Dakar Marketing Tool, which is an international graphic and printing company providing you with all of your marketing needs to help you and your company grow. Our popular products are branded rings, branded pins, branded golf shirts, branded jackets. You can see we've been wearing them throughout the week. We also have God You African American History Bibles, which feature your name, pictures, bio, as well as historical African Americans in the fields of being astronauts, civil rights, education, literature, entrepreneurs, medicine, scientists, inventors, religious leaders in the military, sports, Hollywood, music, entertainment, government, and politics, and blacks in the Bible. And we have in large print all the books of the Bible as well as all the scripture so it's easy for you to follow. In addition, we provide merchandise that's crucial to your business's success, such as our magazines, banners, flyers, digital business cards, and printed business cards. And with our innovative tools, you can turn your brick and mortar into an e-commerce platform. During this time of constant Zoom meetings and webinars, we at the car marketing tools want to make sure you're prepared with our zoom for profits class we finished our zoom for profits class and you can register for your course today the information is on the screen of how to do so we discussed some in our course how to make money doing zoom zoom essentials zoom basics and turning your brick and mortar into an e-commerce platform and we also have our graduation and i also want to make sure you register for our empower you conference it is friday may 21st 2021 2 p.m eastern standard time you definitely want to join us as for a two-day empower you conference you can see the information on the screen how to register you definitely want to register for it while you still can 